Hey guys, Kari here from the Alfred Homestead, and today I wanted to share with you guys the birth story of my third child. If you haven't seen the video, I did post a birth vlog video for you guys to watch um, showing the actual birth. But now I wanted to get into a little bit more detail about it. All right, so sit back, grab a cup of coffee, let's dive in. All right, so I was 40 weeks and three days when I woke up and went to my second child. She was 14 months old at the time and just did our little morning nursing session like we always do. And for the first time ever, I actually felt my water break. And it was really cool. I'd always wanted to experience this and I finally got to. Um, it wasn't a big burst or anything. It was just a slow trickle and I just knew today was the day. And so I texted my midwife, um, told her I felt that little pop, and that was when I was breastfeeding. So if you guys don't know, breastfeeding can actually um, cause some contractions, especially when you're really late into pregnancy. It's not gonna happen, it's not gonna start labor when your body's not ready. But if your body is already there and ready, it can help start labor. So sure enough, this happened. I texted her. I was super excited. I took a little swab. It's an amniotic fluid swab and it turns blue if it's your amniotic fluid that broke. So you can kind of tell the difference between just discharge and if your water actually broke. And sure enough, it was. But I knew it wasn't going to be until that evening that I had a baby in my arms. And um, so I texted her not to worry, keep all of her appointments. This was going to be a home birth. So all I did was stay at home and keep things relaxed at home. I was with my kids. My husband was off work. So I actually had my mom up in town to help watch the younger two kids when things got really crazy. Um, but things didn't really start picking up until the afternoon. So I kind of had some contractions here or there, nothing crazy. I wasn't in pain. I just kind of went about my day knowing that they would pick up in the afternoon. And sure enough, once it was around nap time for my older two daughters is when I started feeling the, the pressure and being a little bit more painful. So I texted my midwife again. Things are starting to pick up. I think around noon is when I started going into active labor. So I was getting regular contractions every 15 minutes, maybe even a little bit less, and they were definitely getting more painful, but I was still very much in control. It wasn't too crazy. Um, I was outside walking around to get some fresh air and just slowly sort of holding on to whatever I could, whether that was the kitchen counter or outside, the railing outside or something. And just holding that and just kind of swaying and, you know, just letting things open and, you know, become loose and just, you know, keeping myself in the right mind frame for birth. Um, so around four o'clock is when I felt myself go through transition. And I always know when I go through transition because I get this overwhelming urge to throw up and Aside from my first birth, I don't really throw up during birth. I just get really nauseous. And so that's when I knew I need to text the midwife and tell her it's time to come. Um, and transition is always the hardest part, you guys, for most women. Um, <laughs> I'm no exception to that. I always know that that's where I'm at because the pain, that's where you're like, okay, I can't do this. Can I do this? I just want to be in the hospital and give me an epidural or something. When you're speaking like that, most of the time, that's the toughest part. You're going through the transition. So, and then this was my third birth at this point, my third um, medication free birth. So I knew, okay, this is where I'm at. And sure enough, so I, you know, I texted. The midwife at four o'clock and she got there around five and it went really quick after that you guys so my, she got all set up and everything and I got in the birthing tub this was the first time that I had tried a birthing tub although I did try to get in the water with my first birth um, it was just a big tub like a jacuzzi tub and I didn't like it it made me even more nauseous 
like the smell of the chlorine in the water and it just didn't work for me. Some women swear by being in water and I believe it. I really do, but it's not for me. It's not for this girl. And, um, but I thought this is different. It's a birthing tub. So it's really deep, right? And it's like you're weightless in this water. Whereas in a tub, it's not big enough for you to feel weightless. So I thought maybe this will be, maybe this will make the difference. No, I think I was in there for 10 minutes before I was like, I can't do this. I have to get out. It was getting cold and feeling cold and wet while you're in transition. <sighs> Not a good idea for me. Okay. I know people swear by it and that's, I, I highly recommend you at least try it. Um, but for me, I know going forward, that's not going to be my plan. So, and not to mention, it took up a huge space of the room. So it just wasn't, it was annoying. Um, but that's okay. Lesson learned. Um, so I got out and I, I got dressed and I could tell that by the time the midwife got there, I had made it through transition because now I was getting a little bit more of a break be between contractions. They weren't coming on every, you know, two or three minutes. Um, now it was like, okay, I got a 10 minute break to just sit on the bed. I was sitting Indian style on the bed and um, just talking and the other midwives arrived shortly afterwards. So they had everything set up and ready to go. And we were all just hanging out and talking. It really wasn't, um, <laughs> you know, I think I had a couple of contractions when the midwife was there and her assistant. So there was three midwives there. Um, so we were all in our room and during this time, actually, I could hear my youngest screaming, and I think this stalled my labor, actually. And my midwife said the same thing. She was like, do you think that you could have your mom take them outside? Because this is definitely going to take longer, and it's going to be harder for you. Even just mentally hearing your baby cry while you're trying to birth another baby, <laughs> it's just mentally not easy. And so, of course, you know, my mom took them outside, took the, the older two outside, and as soon as she did, within five minutes, I was, I was on the bed, and again, we were all just talking, but I felt the urge to push just, boom, out of nowhere. I was not even expecting it myself, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty in tune with what's going on now. This is my third, my third time. And it, it got us all by surprise, because suddenly I was like, ooh, <laughs> Oh, and I, I kind of leaned forward so that I was kind of like on all fours on the bed. And I just gave one little, <clears throat> one push, not a big push, but one good push. And my water just burst on the bed. And everybody, you could see in the video, the, some of the midwives were sitting on the ground. We were just talking and they were like, oh, okay, that was our water. And everyone gets up all at once. And y'all, within one minute of that one push when my water broke, my baby was born. That's how fast she came. So I gave the one push, the water came out, and I gave another, I, I realized, oh, my body, this isn't, this isn't it. My body wants me to keep pushing. So I took a nice deep breath and with one push got her head out. And then I heard the midwife say, I've got a head. And so I was like, oh my God, this is happening. This is happening right now. I, I thought it was gonna be a little bit slower, you know, like 10, 15 minutes like last time. No, I was screaming and you know, after the head is out, the head really isn't that bad for me. It's pushing the body out. And that's when I really picked up the screaming. But then the midwife reminded me, act like you're, act like you're on the toilet. Act like you're pushing, you know, like a bowel movement out. And that's when I get, that's when I focused and I stopped screaming and I just bared down. The problem is you can't really bear down if you're like screaming off the top of your lungs, like a really high pitched scream. So you really have to like grunt, like a deep grunt kind of pushing. That's really gonna help push the baby out, not if you're screaming on the top of your on the top of your lungs. So I did, I got a couple good solid pushes and she was out. So I literally pushed for one whole minute. <laughs> 
before my baby was out. But it was funny because I'm on all fours on the bed and the midwife kept shoving my butt like, go forward, go forward. And I didn't know what she was talking about because I'm in the throes of labor. I'm like not you know, I'm gripping onto my husband's shoulders in front of me and my midwife is behind me telling me to go forward because logistically this baby had to come out. My butt was like this close from the, from the mattress. So that was kind of like logistically, we just weren't ready for it, you know? So <laughs> when you're in the middle of pushing a baby out, you don't want to have to shift positions, but the other midwives had to come in and kind of help lift my leg while I'm, while I was pushing to help give, give us enough space so that the baby could be born without being smushed into the mattress. So all in all, she was probably my easiest birth. Um, definitely quickest as far as the pushing goes. I think from active labor to when I had my baby was about four hours. So um, she was born at 6.30ish um, at night, so I still had plenty of time to relax and bring my kids in to see her before they went to bed. And um, so that was great. The timing was really nice. It was still um, daylight out when she was born, and um, my girls got to meet her before they went to bed. Oh, and so we did weigh her. She was nine pounds and three ounces, so she was right in the middle between my other two babies. And the placenta actually weighed over two pounds. So that's a massive placenta. The midwives were just so in awe, and they always are. I always get this comment that my placentas are the biggest they've ever seen. Um, so that's kind of <laughs> fun fact, uh, TMI maybe. But um, so everything was healthy. And something that I'd never experienced before either was that with this baby, they weren't screaming when they came out and crying. So I actually thought something might have been wrong. I was like, is she okay? Is she fine? And the midwives assured me that she sounded great. And within a, you know, a minute, she did let out a little cry, but she wasn't upset. Like she wasn't upset like my other babies when they were born, where they're really giving a nice, healthy cry. And that's what you tend to think when babies are born, right? That's that's the sign that everything's going as it should and the baby is healthy. So, you know, I was kind of worried, but my midwife assured me, no, you know, a lot of times this is just what a home birth is like. So I don't know if that's true or not, but for me, that, that was true for this birth. So anyways, it was a really positive experience. It was my first home birth and I will never go back. My husband and I really, really enjoyed having our child at home in the safety of our own house with our children there and we're never going back. The home birth was for us the way to go. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Give a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you guys next time.